Well, hey, folks. Welcome to Instead of the Wolf Den. Welcome aboard the Jetty Wolf. And I'm going to show you basically the last phase of me and my Mercury Pro Cricker. There she be. Sitting next to the big Suzuk. And believe it or not, she's not fully... She doesn't have even three hours on her yet. She's not even fully uh, broken in. I have not had it at Warp Factor 9. But this is the last installment that you'll see for quite a while, I'm sure, until I do something else kind of radical to get where I want to be with my safety kicker system. As well as for fishing coming up here, I give it less than, maybe less than two weeks, maybe two weeks, and we're going to be full bore, it should be full bore Spanish mackerel season at the St. John's River Inlet here in Jacksonville, Florida. And I'll be doing some trolling around. I'll probably have some kids on the boat. I always like putt putting around. Doing some uh, planer and spoon trolling for Spanish mackerel. So that is coming up in my fishing season. Let alone, I would like to do, of course, some trolling on the beach. I got some places I'd still like to troll some paddle tails for, for, uh, for trout. That type of situation. So a lot is coming with the old Merc 15 Pro Kicker. But I wanted to show you because I just got it delivered, just got it in my hands. Uh, my last phase, and that is a battery charger, a Real Pro Series Dual Pro. I have a Dual Pro two battery system charger on the boat already i really like these as a matter of fact my batteries that i have on the jetty wolf right up under here and these boxes right there and there's my charger if you can see that is also a dual pro because my batteries are north star agms and literally, North Star and the rep for North Star told me that they really kind of prefer these Dual Pro chargers. I believe mine under the console is a USA made. USA, if it breaks, it's super fixable. You set it in, they pull it apart. This one isn't. This is sort of a small little cheapy one that's still about $100. Here it is right here. This one is encapsulated. But this is the Dual Pro uh, single battery charger. 6 amp. And you got all your accoutrements here. You got your cord. And your little eyes that go on the charger or on the battery then what I wanted is to do this right and since I got and I'll show it to you since I got a U1 battery so this is a group U1 battery box well this is the box for a battery box and I'll be showing you this this is, you notice this is a small little battery. I had a lawnmower battery that I've been using and I didn't want to go ahead and just mess, have nothing but that. So I got the correct AGM and this box snaps together. Well, what this is, is a small box and it's a snap lid and you run your cables up inside right here it's hollow goes up inside and 
push this in. No. All right. And it also comes with, you know, a, a strap. I probably won't be strapping it down. So that's what we got right now. And I'm going to show you what I've been doing as far as battery is concerned lately. Like I said, I had a small little lawnmower battery. And it didn't have the cold cranking amps that my 15 that my 15 Merc was supposed to have. I believe they wanted something like 300 cold cranking amps and almost pushing somewhere near like 400 marine cold cranking amps. I want that kicker. And believe it or not, I called Mercury Marine. And I said, how can I just take my cables coming off my 15 and just attach it right straight to like the cables or the connections for my Suzuki 250 that run from the back of my boat all the way up to my batteries and then go to my battery switch and my automatic switching switch and my automatic you know starting switch and all the, and the guy says Dave don't do that he says a lot of people do and a lot of people have trouble later on he says, you do not want to be charging your cables with your 15 mercury because there's always where uh, voltage can backfeed to your Suzuki. And he said, you don't want to have your Suzuki backfeeding to your 15 kicker. He said, smartest thing when it comes to safety and keeping everything going is running it separately and that was always my big question that was my big big question and just to hear it from you know mercury alone was enough to, for me to go okay i'm going to get a good quality agm battery i'm going to get a charger down there because there might be weeks that this isn't running in the middle of the winter time or something and it's going to be cold that could draw the battery down and i want to put it in the proper size box Either I'm going all the way top notch or I ain't going. It's just that simple. So let me show you what I got going on right now. All right. Well, this is what I had on me. Well, you know, in my in my garage, my shop here, I had this little cheapy Everlast Lawn and Garden 230 cold cranking abs group U1 R. Well, it's called just a group U, U1. This is the battery that I use to run lights, 12 volt lights during hurricanes and storms and power outages. And look, I can pick it up with one hand. Okay, this is the battery that I replaced it with. This there's my new battery box this is my new one this one's called a v max tanks it's supposed to be <coughs> a made in america this one weighs hefty 24 pounds now i can't grab 24 pounds with just my fingers but there's the difference between batteries. This is an absorbed glass mat. It's, uh, I believe, it's an AGM deep cycle, and that's what you'd want. And I believe this one is 300 cold cranking amps or better. So uh, this comes highly recommended this little battery right here it's a charge tank is what they call it fast re recharge rate because it's an AGM and here's what I was doing I literally had an M half of an ammo box and I had this in it in here move the light So, there's my fuel. 
Here's my battery cable. And now I am going to take my charger and I'm going to keep the battery in here. This is where, this is what I had to do to plug off my saltwater wash down. Because if you look right in the back there, there's an elbow all the way in the back where it goes into a, an aluminum nipple. I could not get that nylon elbow out. As you can see, there's a nylon elbow right there screwed in. There is no way in hell I could get that out. So I just had to put a piece of hose because my saltwater wash down used to sit here. And as you can see, that's the method to the madness. I already kind of had an idea of what I wanted to do. And I needed this space to do it because I'm going to put my battery there. So I had a lot of ideas floating and since that that old uh, wash down pump that you saw in an earlier episode was leaking anyhow and I didn't want to go out and spend two hundred dollars to replace a wash down pump when I got a five gallon bucket or a three gallon rubber bucket and it works you know I'm not doing major wash downs I cleaned some fish on my cutting board here you know I wash my hands in a bucket, I put it down, and, and then I'm going home. And when I get home, I, the whole boat gets, you know, washed down. So, that's the system. Get rid of this. This goes by the wayside. This goes into this battery box, which it fits perfectly. Okay. Oh, damn, that battery's heavy. That is one bad to the bone battery right there. So that fits in there perfectly. I got to reroute the cables here. I can see a little bit because it's kind of goofy just the way it is now. Then the lid goes on. That will sit, this will sit safely inside here. And then what I'm going to do, let me see if I can show you. This is all getting in a real, holding the camera and doing everything at the same time. I'm going to take this Dual Pro single 6 volt battery charger and I've got these I got these studs right here that I've always had sitting here because what it is it's mounted it's for another fuel filter because if you're running twins the man the, the builder of my boat automatically gives you this I've had various things mounted to it there at one time I had a, um, a live well timer on there at one time. So I'm going to see if I can mount this up there like that and it'll be on like an aluminum strapping. I'm going to make, I'm going to make a mount for this right here. I'm going to connect the battery permanently. And then I will just, when I want to charge it, I'll pull out the cord and plug it in because of course I always have power right there. I got my pull down, which it's kind of up there on the top. I got to climb up there and grab it because I always charge the batteries under my console also. Um, every time the boat sits for a couple days, that's what I do. That's the project. This I'll show you when it's all done, if I sort of end up doing it the way I want. But that is basically phase five of my uh, Merc Pro Kicker 15. I don't see myself doing much right now uh, other than running it on the tiller with my tiller extension that you saw in another video it kind of cool standing back here and running the engine and like i said i can lock it and i can turn the suzuki 
but what it does, it just doesn't turn quick. You know, it, you just kind of do a, a slow turn. So if I'm out in the ocean or something, I could still do that and be standing at the console and just have the, uh, the Merc 15 kick, you know, just kicking along nice and slow. And I can turn with the big engine with using it as a rudder. So let me get started on this. And I'll hopefully show you the end product when it's all put together. I'm finally done. Why does every boat project take forever? Uh, it's almost dark. I'm crawling around here on the deck. Well, I'm going to show you. I got her all done. Uh, couldn't show you every detail because every detail took like three tries. Because I'm not running the Ace Hardware for that monsterly fantastic nut and bolt section that they have but um, I had to make a bracket and then I didn't have the hardware and then the hardware I had didn't want to fit so being the MacGyver that I am we just make shit work all right well let me show you what I got this is going to be under a light for the sheer fact that, you know, it's almost dark out here under the old Jetty Wolf port. Okay, I showed you this before. Fuel filter bulbs. Ugh, i got to get on my hands and knees here. Oh, my God. I've been on my hands and knees for hours. Okay. So... Back here, I got the battery box. Got it all wired in. Got the engine on. On there. And I pre-wired the battery charger. Alright, so. I got it going on right now. There's the power button. And then it's charging. And of course, I've got too much cable. And... What I did is up here, just like on the fuel filter, I've got a bracket here that the head of the fuel filter bolts on. Well, there was a second one like I showed you before. Oh, excuse me. Here comes a Navy helicopter. Oh, yeah. Good, good, good. Real good noise. Okay. So... This bracket that was back here to hang a head of a, power, uh, a fuel filter on, I had to make this bracket because these two holes here and here in the battery charger didn't really fit on there. I got it on there. It's a little uh, shaky because I only got mounted at the top. So I had to make a bracket. So I got my battery box. Here it is, the power. And then I got the power cord, and it's plugged into my power here under the carport. This is the end. This is the end. This is the end. What is the old Jim Morrison song? I can't remember the words. <laughs> this is the end. Something or other, my friend. <laughs> This is the end. All right, so. Uh, 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 all right, so that's it. And I'm going to charge this deep cycle. And now I always will have power. Or uh, a charger back here for my power for the... 15 horse outboard that's pretty much it so I'm thick as they say 
stick a fork in my ass, I'm done. And guess what time it is? PBR time. I got one other video brewing. Has absolutely nothing to do with boating. Nothing. But it has to do with something that you, all my subscribers who watch all my videos uh, will understand why I did what I did. But I got another one brewing. I don't know when I'll get it out. Today is Wednesday and it's turning really cold. And I will get this one out and I will try to do the other one that has nothing to do with boating. But it's very interesting. So thanks for watching. And uh, this is the completion of the old kicker engine. Oh, I'm in love now. I feel like my boat is so rigged and ready. Ah. <sighs> It's just a satisfying feeling. So, I'll see you on the next one, and thanks for stopping by. Don't forget, give her a thumbs up. Take care. And my frog togs on I got every kind of bait A man might need Well there's a little rain But I don't care I'm like a boy scout Always prepared To handle just about anything Some folks call me crazy Some tell me get a life To me there's nothing better Than to spend all of my time Out on the water Cause that's where I get my kicks out on the water Hey, it's my residence Don't wanna waste my time or a single dime On something high and dry I love stalking fish and ripping lips Yeah, I love to spend my life out on the water Get up, attach the boat to my own truck Then I tow it down to my favorite lake A big rooster tail, then I'm there My medicine's the Kool-Aid air And it's guaranteed to cure most anything Some folks never get it The ones that do get hooked If I could, I'd show them all how life can be so good That's where I get my kids out on the water. Hey, it's my residence. Don't want to waste my time or a single dime on something high and dry. I love stalking fish and ripping lips. Yeah, I love to spend my life out on Stalking fish and ripping lips out. Yeah.